How's it going, fellow flock members? It's Birdman1216, back here with some more Reddit content. Today I'll be taking another look at those people we all dread meeting in our everyday lives. That's right, I'm talking about some more entitled parents today. Without any further ado, here is our first story. I didn't drown for your benefit. I normally don't post on Reddit, but I found out about r slash entitled parents and thought this would be a good place to share this with you guys. Let's get this straight. This happened around 10 years ago, so I was pretty young, but this particular story is one that has always pushed into the front of my mind ever since, so I've never forgotten it. Pardon any grammar or inspelling. To give a little bit of background, my local church has a summer camp every year, and while my parents couldn't really afford to get my sister and I into that camp for the whole month, they were able to get us at least two weeks of it. It wasn't really a camp per se, since it was just going to the church's school every day to do activities with other kids your age and then go swimming at the local pool right next to it at the end of the day before being picked up by your parents. My older sister and I are 4 years apart in age, so we were in separate groups, I was 8 and she was 12, and let me tell you, I had the worst experience at a Catholic summer camp. The instant I met with the group of girls I would be spending every day with, I knew I would be the outsider. I hadn't even told them my name when suddenly this girl, E.G., would soon become the leader of the group through entitlement. She was the oldest and always let us know that. She said, Haha, ew, you're really big. While I wasn't particularly fat, just a bit thicker than most, I was pretty tall for a kid so that played a big part in my appearance. One group had three camp counselors who were teenage girls and they were all very pretty, so naturally the girls in my group always wanted to talk to them and hang around them at any chance. I ended up making one friend, and knowing very well how jealous girls can get, I did my best to avoid getting any attention from the counselors. That didn't last very long. As a kid, I had a really bad nose bleeding problem where the slightest touch on my nose or being in the heat too long will cause my nose to bleed heavily for a very long time, and unfortunately my nosebleeds happened every single day, sometimes twice. Whenever this would happen, two of the counselors would instantly drop whatever they were doing to tend to me, and E.G. would always whine about it, saying things like, She's just doing it to get attention, and she's not worth it, while they tried to stop the bleeding. By day four of camp, the counselors had to start taking me to a nearby classroom away from wherever we were, because E.G.'s shouting would lead them, cleaning not only the blood, but the tears from my face from crying. While it was nice of them to try to get me away from her, they never did anything to stop E.G.'s bad behavior. I would always show up for camp to E.G. complaining in face, saying things like, You're ugly. Our counselors would rather spend time with me because I'm pretty. My mom says you're being a crybaby just to get attention, and you better not bleed again like an idiot. By the second week, none of the girls wanted to talk to me anymore because of E.G.'s insistence that I'm not worth the attention, and my friend had joined E.G.'s group in fear of being alienated along with me. My last day at camp ended with a freaking bang, let me tell you that. After recovering from a particularly bad nosebleed that E.G. caused by accidentally hitting my face with the end of a jump rope, we all went to the pool since it was the end of the day. Kids that were allowed to jump from the diving board and swim in deeper water were given a wristband, and I happened to be the only one in my group good enough to have one. Because of this, pool time was always relatively peaceful for me. E.G. and her friends would always gawk and talk about a lifeguard who worked there. He was a teen who was friends with our counselors, and it seemed like today E.G. made a plan to get his attention. While I was minding my own business near the deep end of the pool, suddenly I hear some girls say, Look, Sumi is there too. See if you can hit her. And I didn't register this before E.G. yelled, Look at me! and jumped directly on top of me. Feeling pain on my head and breathing in a mouthful of water, I couldn't tell how low I was until E.G. kicked my head against to boost herself back up, slamming my head against the bottom of the pool. At this point, things got understandably blurry. From what I remember, and what my sister could explain since some of her friends had seen the whole thing and related to her, LG had instantly jumped in to get me out of the water. EG was outraged as LG got me breathing again and picked up my body to take me into the lifeguard quarters to tend to my head, which was bleeding. After somewhat recovering, LG told me I couldn't swim anymore just in case I pass out and to go see a doctor as soon as I could get my head checked. Walking back outside, I was instantly cornered by E.G., who was pissed. She started her rant with a loud, UGH, and said, I can't believe you did this to me. He was supposed to save me and then kick you out, but no, you got him to carry you, when it should have been me. I stayed silent, still pretty disoriented and in pain to do anything. She kept going, They're not letting me in the pool anymore and it's all your fault. I just nodded pathetically, not wanting her to hurt me anymore. 
Naturally, when E.G.'s mom, E.M., found out about it, she was furious, demanding that E.G. be lifted from the swimming ban. They were just playing a little too rough, E.M. reasoned with the counselors. Right? Looking directly at me with a harsh glare. E.M. waited for me to respond. Yeah, I said to them. It was an accident. Content, E.M. and E.G. looked at the counselors, who couldn't argue further. E.G. could swim again as long as an accident wouldn't happen again. The next day, my sister went to camp and I went to the doctors. Luckily, my head didn't require stitches and was healing fine, but I had to get the inside of my nose burned to stop the frequent bleeding. My sister said I was announced as my group's camper of the week, but it was probably a reward given out of pity for my misery. I never went to that summer camp again, and I could never attend mass at church without remembering nearly dying at the age of 8. I actually feel really bad for the OP here, but I feel like this story belongs more in the Entitled Children subreddit or the Entitled People subreddit, because the parents didn't really have much to do with everything that was going on in the story. Entitled Uncle demands our house for his son. This happened a long time ago, so it may be a bit fuzzy. When I was six, my father passed away. My mother had died giving birth to me, so all that was left was just me and my two older brothers, 20 and 19. He had no will, so the house and his small shop went to me and my brothers. Our only other relatives were a distant uncle and cousin who we barely knew. After my dad passed, my oldest brother adopted me so I wouldn't be taken from them and ran the shop as best he could. So about three months after my dad's funeral, we get a call from my uncle saying he and his son were in town. At first, we figured he just wanted to check up on us, as many people did. When he showed up, everything was normal until he said this to my oldest brother. So, when do you guys plan on moving? <laughs> we aren't moving anywhere, why do you ask? Well, since your dad left it to me, I want to move my son in. We were just confused, since the house was ours by law. No, it's not. Everything was left to me, older brother, and OP. Well, I'm his brother, so I get his house, and besides, you guys can't keep this place up. I could tell even back then that my older brother was getting a bit angry. No, this house is ours. We're not moving. Oh, come on. My son needs a place to live, and besides, you got money to go find a new place. My older brother and my younger brother are now very angry. Then tell him to find his own place. We're not moving from our home. Fine, you damn brats. I'll call the police and have them evict you. At this, he stormed out, and a few hours later, the police arrived. EU had apparently told them that they were sexually abusing me and had narcotics. After explaining everything to them, they seemed to understand the situation, but still they had to call Child Protection Services to make sure. After about three days of investigation work by Child Protective Services, they found nothing, not that there was anything to find. After this, my older brother filed a restraining order against him. For about three months after all of this, my cousin constantly apologized for his father's behavior. I have not seen him since that day, not that I want to. I don't get the logic, not that there is any, behind people reporting obviously fake claims that can be proved in, like, one day of investigation. That's nothing more than a minor inconvenience to everyone involved. I mean, unless the Entitled Uncle was completely blinded by his own stupidity, then he would have known that nothing would come from the faulty charges he tried to file against the brothers. And finally, how dare you be gay in front of my son? Right off the bat, plot twist. The EP is my mom. My son is me. So this happened a long time ago, and I was seven at the time. Me and my mom like to go to a small supermarket in our town every day before school so I can get any sweets I want for school. So this one time on like the third day of school, we were going there as usual. And I'm not afraid to say it, but my mom was and still is an absolute Karen. The type that thinks they're the best at everything and are overprotective of their children. So we were at the supermarket when suddenly my mom spots these two guys holding hands and I remember my mom saying, ugh, in an extremely disgusted way. She told me, honey, can you see those two boys holding hands? Boys, because I couldn't differentiate between man and boy. Yes? These boys love each other and it's gross. Always love a girl, not a boy like you. I was a bit puzzled. Keep in mind I was a second grader at the time, so love was one of those feelings that I'd only had for my family, not for anyone else. My mom holds my hand firmly and starts pulling me towards the two guys, and I almost fell over, but I try to keep my pace. <laughs> I just want some chocolate. And my mom practically slaps this guy. What the hell, lady? What are you doing? What do you mean, what are we doing? We were shopping and you came up and slapped him. You know what I'm talking about. You were holding hands. So? That's homosexual. That's illegal. How dare you be gay in front of my little baby? 
Mom, can we please get the chocolate and go to school? Wait, honey, I'm just telling these boys it's not right to like other boys. What? Illegal? What's wrong about it? Yeah, is there anything wrong with it? Yes, it's disgusting and you could go to prison. Now, all this commotion caught the attention of a nearby security guard. Sorry, what's going on here, ma'am? These two guys are homosexual. They should be thrown in prison. The security guard's clueless about what to say. Do something! Knock them unconscious or something! Ma'am, please calm down. I cannot do anything to them, nor arrest them, as they are doing nothing wrong. They're homosexuals! That is not a crime. I don't care! Arrest them! Ma'am, I'm gonna ask you to grab whatever, buy it, and leave the store. What? They're homosexuals and you're making me leave the store? I'm sorry, ma'am, but you have to leave. Fine. My mom, feeling defeated as hell, grabs a chocolate bar, buys it, and we head on to school. We get there 12 minutes after class has started, because the school is already a bit far away and the whole fight and her looking for the best chocolate took 12 minutes. I am now 39 and my mom treats me like a disgrace to the family. She wanted me to be a teacher at a school because she is the headmistress at that school. I went down a different path and became a GameStop store manager and an indie developer on the side because I love gaming and can answer most questions a person can ask. She was obviously mad. I had to lie just so she could let me go to a computer science college. I said I would be a computer science teacher, so yeah, hope you enjoyed this long and weird story. I mean, I know this story happened a long time ago, but it's 2019, can we stop judging people based solely on their sexuality? I mean, it's just one small part of what makes a person who they are. Things like this still happen every day, so if we could just let people live their lives, that would be fantastic. Alright, vlog members, that's all the time I have today. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate you giving it a like and hitting the subscription button if you haven't done so already. Let me know if you want to see more of this, more of r slash I don't work here lady, or any other subreddit you'd like me to take a look at next. Oh, and I almost forgot, we're almost at 2,000 subscribers, that's insane because I started this channel about a month ago, and to see this kind of growth is amazing, so thank you all so very much. And as always, links to all the original stories can be found in the description box below.